is Dave Kiss. I am a co-organizer of the Akron Front End Development Group, along with Byron, who's I think in hiding right now. Uh, so if any, if, oh, there he is. He's not hiding. He's back. Spotted. Uh, so hey, if you need anything or have any questions about how the evening is going along, you can find me, bug me, and it's Dave and Byron. Uh, welcome. I'm glad everybody could come. This is an awesome turnout. This is probably one of our bigger turnouts that we've had. Uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun. So what we do at the Akron Front End Development Group is meet up once a month and talk about some of the latest stuff uh, happening in uh, web technology. So whether that is actually front end uh, for styles or JavaScript, that sort of thing. Uh, but generally, we kind of like to open up a little bit and talk more just about uh, how how the internet's going and, and what's happening online for the people that are making the internet. So. Uh, if that sounds like something that is interesting to you as a designer, developer, marketer, uh, you're in the right spot. So tonight is kind of our lightning talks version of the event. Uh, so we're just kind of hanging out, socializing, having some good food. And uh, we have five talks in store tonight, which are going to be awesome. Uh, we're talking about uh, a couple of folks here from the Goodyear team are talking about uh, the mean stack and uh, I believe the mobile apps. And then we have some other folks talking about CSS, Grid, uh, React Native, and Drupal. So we have a lot to learn tonight, or at least I do, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, so we, I think we have something for everybody here. So I, I would be remiss if I didn't say thank you uh, to Goodyear and Ella for all of your hard work. Um, yeah, please. <laughs> which like blew my mind, because it looks incredible. It looks like some of the, the most amazing food. I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but I will. Um, so you did so much work, so thank you for all of your help. I, I would like to invite, uh, if you have a few words to come up to share a little bit more about Goodyear. Cool, thanks. Hi everyone, thank you for coming out. Like you said, I'm Ella Randazzo, and I work here um, in IT. Uh, so again, thank you, we're really excited to have you guys. Um, something that IT and Goodyear is all about is continuous learning, so we thought this was a great partnership to learn from you guys, have our associates share some knowledge um, with everyone else, and like I said, just keep up to date of um, what's going on in the internet, the front end development, is that something that we're trying to get better at. Um, we're so excited to hear all the different talks that are going on, um, and hear what everyone else has to say, and kind of get an outside view of different things that maybe good year could learn from, anything um, especially with networking, you guys can talk to each other, learn what everyone's doing, and hopefully we can all help each other in our work. Um, so without that, we're really excited to have you guys. Um, feel free, again, there's a lot of pizza, so eat as much as you want, and after this we'll do some more networking too. Um, so we're excited to have you guys here, and thanks for letting us host it. Thank you. Thanks, this is, this is awesome. What, what a cool space. Uh, so where are we? So yeah, we're, we're always looking for opportunities for uh, sponsorship or space to be provided for some of our meetups. So if that sounds like something that you you personally have a, a warehouse that is just bequeathed to you if somewhere in your family history, uh, or your company might be interested in something like that, please come find me or Byron and let's talk. Uh, we'd love to uh, figure out if there's any partnership opportunities there. Um, restrooms is a point that I don't actually know, but I made a note to figure out. So if you have to use the restroom, they blank. Are straight ahead and to the right. You go that way and you go to the right. Okay, cool. Um, you need you to can go past the first hallway to the Passing second the hallway and go to the right. Yes. That's a better probably explanation than I can give. Um, so yeah, find somebody that looks like they know where the restrooms are because I've seen them. Um, and keep walking and walk on the right. Okay. <laughs> They, I'm sure they're here somewhere. Yeah, Could you just raise your hand? So if you ever get lost, we can, we can help you get around. Find Ella. She's so smart. Okay, cool. Um, what other business items do we have? Oh, so we always like to provide an opportunity for uh, job seekers or people that are hiring. Uh, usually we give an opportunity to kind of allow you to describe and, and what your company does and all that. but. We are kind of strapped for time tonight. So if that's you um, seeking or hiring, maybe you could just we could raise your hands or something. And then uh, if you see somebody else that raised their hand, maybe you should go talk to them because they're probably doing something that you want to maybe do in some way. Let's, let's do it one at a time. Oh, that's smarter. OK, so uh, if you are a job seeker, uh, hands. OK, we got one, two, three over here, four. OK, and then all the other hiring 
hands. One, two, over there, three. So take note and find these people and go say hi and, and introduce yourself. Okay, also, we are always looking for folks to share uh, if they're super smart, which you guys are all super smart. So come share information and, and give a talk if you're interested. Uh, we always like to have people present uh, things that they feel very comfortable sharing, and uh, we always try to plan that in advance. So if that sounds like something that you are interested in, again, find Byron and I. We'll get something set up. Uh, we do have another event happening next month. It is TBD. Uh, it's going to be kind of just a web roundup, which would just be folks that are working uh, with internet technologies, but it's just kind of a, a social gathering. So uh, yeah, get, get in the same room as other people that are doing the same sort of thing that you're doing and uh, you know, brush shoulders and, and meet other people in the area. So we will introduce that in, in the newsletter, so make sure that you're part of the meetup group on meetup.com. And we are wrapping up here. I know I'm taking up too much time. We are continuing hangouts afterwards at Market Street Grill. I've never been there, but I think Byron has, and he says thumbs up. So uh, it is, I'm gonna give the address because I looked up on Google before and it like didn't come up. Oh, okay, it's down the street. It's 1677 East Market Street. Not far, it's like a mile. Yeah. You probably walk there. Don't, okay. Uh, I'm gonna go, Byron's gonna go, so it's gonna be a great time. At least we'll be there. Uh, we also encourage social shares with hashtag Akron Web. So if there's anything interesting that you hear tonight and you want to share it, please feel free to do so. And without me taking up too much more time, uh, I want to introduce Mark Kramer, who's going to talk first about mobile apps. Mark's on the Goodyear team here, and he's going to be smart to all of you. So thanks for your time. Hi, everybody. Um, Mark Kramer. I work here at uh, Goodyear in Global IT. I'm a uh, mobile architect. Give me a second to get signed in here and we'll get rolling. Um, is there anybody here in the audience that uh, does mobile development? A couple? Native or hybrid? Anybody? <coughs> a little bit of both? Okay. Bear with me. Got my presentation here. All right. So, um, just wanted to uh, give a little high level overview of getting started with hybrid mobile app development um, and uh, how not to get too lost in uh, getting started and choosing an option and, and uh, so on and so forth. So, um, so I guess everybody has this question when they start out, what, why hybrid apps versus native apps? And you've probably all seen this uh, slide a thousand times. The uh, you know, there's the great debate that's been happening over time. Facebook has you know, thrown their uh, opinion into uh, the uh, web sphere and uh, said that, oh, you know, HTML5 and JavaScript isn't fast enough for us. But, you know, I think a lot has changed. Uh, devices have changed, hardware has changed, everything's gotten faster. Um, and HTML5 really does any more act more like native. Um, but there are times when HTML5 and JavaScript and your responsive web application that you might be developing just aren't quite enough. You might need a uh, direct access to a native API that's on the device. You, uh, for example, you, know, you need to access a piece of hardware on the device, like the, the camera, or um, for some of the stuff that we're doing, you might need to access the Bluetooth and um, connect to other Bluetooth devices and do some back and forth. Um, you might, <clears throat> your choice for whether you go native or hybrid might simply be what resources do I have? Do I have JavaScript developers? Do I have uh, I, Objective C or uh, Swift developers or Java developers? Um, so that, that might be your decision point. Um, or I might just simply be interested in, in maintaining one set of code. I don't want to have two sets of code out there, one for Android, one for iOS, and, and uh, that's what works best for me. So, you know, I'm not, not trying to be an, an iOS or Android hater here, but, uh, you know, because we all got to deal with it at the end of the day. Um, but where do I start? What path do I take? There, how many options are there? What are they? Um, and you'll notice for all you hardcore um, C-sharp developers, I've left an option out here, but 
um, that was kind of intended. <laughs> um, so with JavaScript, uh, developing hybrid mobile apps, we, um, you know, the, the base platform is uh, Apache Cordova. And from there, you've got um, a few frameworks that you can add on top to enhance your user's experience. So in order to make that decision on, on what path I'm going to take, you really start with what you know. Um, set a good, you, know, you have a good foundation if you're working with JavaScript um, and HTML5 and CSS. Look at the frameworks that, avail that are available out there. Um, you might be already working, doing some Facebook development or working with React, so you might add React to your um, environment versus uh, Ionic or just going straight JavaScript and Angular. And then building on that, you can add uh, plugins to do your, uh, to, again, enhance your user experience, get access to those SDKs, native APIs, and um, hardware resources that you need to access. And for that, you, you can uh, just simply go to the Apache Cordova website, go search for the, the uh, type of access that you're looking for. You might need a camera again. So you type in Cordova camera or camera plugin, and up comes a list of uh, plugins that you can add to your project. Or if you don't find the plugin that you're looking for, you might actually have to figure out how to write Objective C code or Java code to um, write your own custom plugin. And, and that is perfectly acceptable uh, if that's what you know how to do. So we need to choose our path wisely. Um, as I said, you can go and search for the uh, plugins that, that you might want, but not all plugins are created equal. We're still working in an open source environment, and uh, Apache does their uh, their best to vet the plugins that are out there and keep a current list. But um, we have found that through our um, experience, that there are some plugins that work and there are some that just don't. Um, We've also learned that um, for setting up our projects and our environments, and, and I won't get into this too much, but um, for you guys that are doing DevOps and, and you have uh, multiple developers on your team, sharing your, your code and working on your project in a multiple developer environment really requires some thorough planning uh, in your initial project setup. And what am I going to add to my project? What source control methods am I going to use? And, and how am I going to uh, commit that and so that everybody else can pull it down and, and work with it and not run into a bunch of trouble. We've um, gone through great lengths to, to make sure that we can share our projects and um, that nobody has to stumble too much with getting started. Another uh, thing that, that you'll find if you're already working in this space or um, if you want to get started is that Changes to iOS and Android are inevitable, and they will require that you be proactive in your testing and looking at the, the beta releases that are coming, what changes are coming for uh, permissions. Uh, for instance, uh, in iOS 11, for camera access, they've just added an additional permission that you have to take care of and, and add to your project. So if you been uh, diligent along the way and you paid attention, you would be able to go in and add that one setting, and any way you go, you're, you're ready for iOS 11. Um, so uh, you really have to, to watch those updates, um, prepare for them, and um, be, I guess, willing to, to put the time in for um, uh, watching those, those changes. And um, finally, you know, as far as testing goes, um, you really want to have a good handle on how you're going to test. So am I going to test with devices? Uh, how many devices? Which devices? What, um, what versions of Android am I going to test on? What versions of iOS do I need to test on? You know, how far back am I going to go? And um, 
you also need to um, really be be ready to um, uh, I guess understand that the emulators can only get you so far in simulators so I can develop 80% of my app and test that on the emulator, but there might be that additional 10 to 20% that I can only test on a device, and I'll show you a little bit of that as well. So really, um, you got to step lightly and uh, try not to get caught up in, uh, in some of the Tangled webs. <coughs> and I wanted to run through a brief demo, if you'll give me a second here to get that up. So how, how am I going to get started with um, a Cordova Ionic project. Well, if I make the screen bigger here. How do I get started with my project? Well, I don't know how, how many of you are familiar with uh, NPM and uh, how many of you uh, work with command line or prefer command line versus IDEs, but um, I can simply do an install of the Ionic framework for Cordova and pull that down. And actually, I can interrupt that because I've already got that pulled down. So then, after I've installed Ionic, <coughs> I simply run a command to start an Ionic project. And there are a couple different formats for um, getting started with Ionic. I, I can start with a, just a blank um, template that, that has no tabs or no predefined user interface. Um, so I can do that, or I can start with a tabs-based interface, which is the, um, some of the most recent UI methods. And when that is done, turn for a little while. Alright, so then I can change directories into that folder that I just created and we have. It's kind of hard to take with one hand. And then I can simply run a command if I just want to see what I've created to start with and, and look at the web version of it. I can serve up the web version. And it'll do all the compiling for me. And there I've got my basic Ionic project ready to get rolling and add my uh, different user interface components to it, and you know, if I want list views or whatever I want, I add to that. Um, so how do I get that to the mobile device? Well, since iOS 11 came out, that has been a significant challenge because they have broken just about everything recently. Um, so again, in and this might, it's a slightly different for a straight Cordova and JavaScript project, but with Ionic, you start everything with Ionic. Um, and we do Ionic Cordova, and I can do a run on, say, Android or iOS. I'll try Android first. And what that'll do is it'll run through the project, and it'll look for any dependencies that you've already set in there. In this case, we're starting from a uh, blank slate, so it's going to add the platform for me for Android. It's going to start to create all the Java code. And when it's done doing that task, it's going to launch the emulator for me and, and show me what we just saw as uh, the web view of that. So we'll give that a minute. If it doesn't go fast enough, then we'll move on. Um, Maybe while that is going, we'll do this. So 
I do have on my device. So the project that we're working on, um, prime example of a case where I just couldn't do a, um, a responsive web app because we needed access to the camera and we need access to the Bluetooth to um, do some reading and, and uh, tread depth measurements of tire. So I wanted to be able to take pictures. You know, I'm out in the field, I'm looking at tires, and you know, I want to use the camera. And I'm gonna, and we can take pictures back there. We can use that. And I want to add that picture to my list. I can preview it, and we can see everybody's lovely faces in the audience. But so that that's an example of, uh, you know, one reason why I would um, want to do a uh, Cordova app, and this this is a Cordova app, straight JavaScript, um, or I might need access to a Bluetooth device, and it'll detect the Bluetooth device in range, but mine is not here. So, with that, um, we've got the emulator started up for our sample project, and um, it's ready to go. So, how do I take this just one step further? If I've got a minute or two, all right, just one quick minute. Show you a quick example. So what I did is I took the, the basic template and I brought it into a project, and you'll see that I've added some data, some JSON data. I've added a, a data access provider so that I can pull that data over, and I've added a list view, and we're going to run this. Well, because everything I want is broken right now. For anybody that wants to see um, stuff in iOS or for Mexico, I can talk about that later. Um, one thing that I don't know who in the room uses Xcode, but one thing that's good about the latest Xcode and iOS changes is that you can run multiple emulators at the same time. So if you want iOS 11, iOS 10, mm. and you want an iPhone 7, and an iPhone 8, and an iPhone 10, you can run those all concurrently, which is now fantastic. So, um, so what I've got here with the, you know, just a little bit of work added to my Ionic project, I've got a list view showing dinosaurs and pictures of the dinosaurs, and if I click on the view option, I get details for that dinosaur, and I can navigate back and so that, again, pretty easy, straightforward, getting going with um, a hybrid mobile app and doing some uh, development that is not native. All right, and that's all I got.